you started at like what 18 doing comedy 21 21 Mm -hmm. and then you stopped for a minute got you a nine to five and then came back to stand up I was um I didn't want to leave stand up but I I my family working class right Mm. and um my uncle worked at the jail and him and my father was like all right we're gonna get him a job because this this comedy my father never thought much of comedy I'm saying like I was 35 years old before he accepted me being a stand up and that was only because he seen it with his own black ass eyes <laughs> 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 he the <laughs> bill been on that same bullshit my father 92 damn and still like he has dementia but he still talks shit you know mm, what I'm saying yeah yeah <laughs> That's in his fiber. Man, huh? that is who he <laughs> is. You dig? And so he was like, yeah, you need a job. And um, I took the job. And it was hard to get. It was a hard job to get. And when I got it, it wasn't particularly hard for me. But it was a lot of people. Man, dig this. This is how screwed up they got our people. They had about 300 openings or something like that. This was right before they signed the crime bill. Right? Mm-hmm. This is 1994. Like- Okay. It, they signed the crime bill in like July, or some shit, of nineteen ninety four. Okay. Um, the line to get the application went around city hall and wrapped around like a fucking belt. It had to be five thousand people trying to get three hundred jobs. Really? I ain't. I am not exaggerating. And then when I got the job. The inter- everything about getting the job was easy. The test was fairly easy. The thing that was, was interesting is when I got, I sat down across from the guy to get the interview, and he s- looks at my application, and he looks me in the face and says, you from Inglewood? And I said, yeah, that's one of the rougher neighborhoods in Chicago. And he says, can you fight? And I said, yeah, I can keep somebody off me. He said, you got the job. Just like that? That was it. That was it. And oh. now there was a lot of other steps between that. Yeah. But when you got to the job interview, they just asked me if I could fight. Lord. <laughs> and they had told me they had me in the mindset that I had to prepare myself. Now, now here's the thing. And I, I know that. that well, let me just say what I'm going to say. The jail population exploded right around that time. Mm hmm. So I'm thinking when I go in here, I hadn't been around. I hadn't been in the jail before. These people are telling me that everybody's out to get you. You got to watch these people. They're going to do stuff to you. It's going to be horrible. And then I get there. I'm like, I know these niggas. <laughs> <laughs> these are the same motherfuckers I come up with. Yeah. I ain't got no problem with none of these people. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Like. <laughs> Even if I didn't know them, I knew that type of person. Mm-hmm. You dig on these ain't number black folk. Right, right. And man, when they figured out, like the first year, you got to do what they tell you to do. Mm-hmm. But after that year, they can't really fire you. Really? It's really hard to fire you after your first year. And so I started showing my entire ass. I'm saying like I'm I'm like they having meetings about shit I had did wrong because I didn't give a fuck about the rules. Right? Uh, <laughs> and, I was, and I was a pretty big dude and my hands was quick. Yeah. And so in my mind, I'm like, if I ain't scared of 48 motherfucking killers that you done put me with, why should I give a fuck about you and that little punk ass white shirt? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And in more than one occasion, I got physical with my with my supervisors and didn't get fired. Really? More than one occasion. Now, that was just one occasion where I actually was finna punch this dude, and they stopped me before I could hit him. But I did push him over the desk and get him at a disadvantage so I could just pound his bones. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, God. And again, it wouldn't have happened because I, don't, I, I hate violence. But the problem is you can't just keep pushing on me. You know what I'm saying? I'm still from Chicago, and I'm not finna be in the neighborhood and people taking shit from me like, you know, I'm like, you know, you walk down the street with a popsicle, nigga, bite off your popsicle or some shit. Like, <laughs> yeah. I ain't gonna let nothing like that happen to me. You know? Yeah. <laughs> so, it, but that was what it was, man. It was amazingly uh, interesting. Really? Man, man, every day, these guys were like kings. You understand what I'm saying? Like, they telling you they this when they ultimately are that. Mm-hmm. Because they were afraid of them. Mm. And the more I start siding with them, the more my personnel file got bigger. Mm. At the, at, by the time I quit, my personnel file looked like roots. 
<laughs> they was writing me up for every damn thing. God damn. It was so funny. It got to the point where they would write me up. And if you get so many write-ups, they send you to investigations because they want to fire you. Mm. But they couldn't really fire me for the shit they were writing me up for. Where I was parking in the parking lot and shit like that. Because it was open disrespect on my part. Let me, let me just set the scene. They had a space for their supervisors to park and then a space somewhere else for officers to park. And none of our spaces were protected at all. So I would just drive and park right next to the boss of the building. Like, fuck you. you did? <laughs> Officer Hines, you can't park over there. All right, well, you ain't got no tow truck or nothing, so I'm going to park this motherfucker. <laughs> the other thing is I would never commit to anything. Mm. I didn't buy no new car, no shit. Like, I bought a car that would last me a couple months and then go buy another one. Uh-huh. Because as soon as you show these people that you need them, then you going to get it. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I was like, I ain't got no babies. I ain't got nothing going on. I can I can live in the backseat of this car if I have to. Never had to. But I'm saying, like, my whole point is don't ever forget your people's humanity. Right. And don't let nobody else forget it, no matter the situation. Right. Man. And so how long how long did you um did you were you in the jail? Nine and a half years. Nine and a half years. Okay. And it was a reason that I quit when I did. Really? What was the reason? Can you talk about it? Yeah, I had a, um, when I went through the academy in 94, it was a little Polish dude, real little Polish dude named Prohaska. He was a cool little dude, but um, he wasn't, he, he was a cool dude, but he wasn't like nobody I would hang out with, right? And one day I was down in the cafeteria complaining about some shit. They call it uh, the officer's dining room because they take every opportunity to separate you from everybody else, right? Mm-hmm. They want you, when they officer, they want these people to know these are our niggas, mm-hmm. you dig? And you niggas is separate, mm-hmm. right? So I'm in the officer's dining room, and what I would do is, I would take motherfuckers food out the office. <laughs> right? So I'd be, I be taking some of my homies. They like, hey man, you got some tuna down there? I said, I'll be right back. Go down there and get them some tuna <laughs> shit. Bring them back to the All this shit you ain't supposed to do, but I like, fuck y'all, what you gonna do? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and so I was down in the office of dining room and Prohaska walks up to me and I'm like, I'm sick of these motherfucking police ass motherfuckers or some shit I said. And he looks at me and says, Hey man, how are you any different? You're no longer a comedian. You a fucking jail guard. This little bitty dude says this to me, and he knows how I get out. And I look at him, and I was like, you know what? You're right. So I start finding an exit strategy. Mm. And I made a movie with a dude who was not, um, he was not very scrupulous. He he didn't have very many scruples. Mm -hmm. And he had a gambling problem. Now, we made a hell of a movie, but it'll never see the light of day because this dude just couldn't control himself. And uh, it was called Chasing Robert, and it was really funny. It was about a guy who had a gambling addiction who was trying to win a bet with a side bet that he could sleep with anybody this other guy chose within two weeks. So the guy chooses me. <laughs> oh, in and the he, movie? In the movie. And uh-huh. he thinks I'm a Baptist minister. Mm. And so now he got to try to get friends with me and sleep with me by the end of the movie. And, you know, none of the shit works out for him. But it does work in the end where he don't die. <laughs> that's, a fun, <laughs> yeah, that's, a, that's a funny just a premise. <laughs> that's, that's fucking funny. Yep. And it was a bunch of A-list comics in it at the time. Um, a lot of white boy comics. But it was a bunch of good comics in it. Like um, Larry Miller was amazing in it. Um, Larry Miller was the dude that played uh, in um, The Nutty Professor as the supervisor. Like the dean of the college. In that movie. And he also was in Pretty Woman as the guy who was trying to sell uh, sell apparel to the chick. And he was like, you need to suck up more. And the dude was like, "You not only are you a powerful man. He was like, not to me, to her. You know what I mean? It was that dude. And Larry, okay. Miller, Larry Miller is funny as hell. Really? He was. If, if this movie would have been released, he would have stole the entire film mm. with just one scene. He was amazing wow. in that movie. And that's what got you out of working in the jail doing the movie. Yep, man. Yep. Okay, what kind of um, what kind of stories or did you see any like really like fucked up shit in the jail? Every day, every really? day, and and it wasn't all violence. It was just 
man, our people was beat down in there, bro. And but even in that, they were still kind of um, regal, like in their behavior. Um, <laughs> It was it was it was this one dude. I, I don't want to say their names because I don't want them to be on blast. But it was this dude that was robbing drug dealers, right? In the jail? No. Oh, in oh, real oh, life. The oh, okay. They got him for a bunch of armed robberies. Mm -hmm. And what he was doing, he was robbing drug dealers and shit. He was a big dude, real tall, strong as hell. Like you know, sometimes we would play around. I'm pushing him and shit. They push me back. I'm like, God damn, nigga, you strong. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? It was it was it was a brotherly type of situation. Mm -hmm. And he was like, Hey man, the police got me because I was robbing niggas before they could. <laughs> <laughs> so they had to get him off the street because he was getting it. <laughs> he was taking away from them. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> okay. So it was always little stuff like that that like they attack you at every turn and everything they could do to try to get you to rise up so they could, you know, put you back in your place. Goodness gracious, man. Goodness. Yeah, I don't I don't I don't think I could uh, I don't think I'm built for that. Like I I'm too, I know too many people that's that's just in the streets and they only doing what they doing because of the circumstances that they in where they really good people. You know what I mean? Yes, sir. And yes, so sir. I, I, I recognize that and I don't think I would have been able to, <laughs> to do I, that. I, I see that. I can understand that and I would agree with that except for the fact that somebody got to stand between them and these people. Yeah, and it was a group of us, and and here's what's even more interesting: they got unions in like 1986, 1987. Police couldn't get unions before that, mm -hmm. not in the state of Illinois. Now, it might have been nationwide, but in the state of Illinois, you couldn't have a union until like like 1987, mm. 1994. All of a sudden, they got a union in '87, and the union had set up where you could get raises real quick. Like every year, they would give you a 5% raise every year for the first five years. Mm. So at the end of your first five steps, you, were, you had made at least 25% more than when you started. Yeah. And then they would give you the increase that they gave everyone else. Right? So like, like, like you automatically going to get a raise after your first year. Mm -hmm. But if the county got a couple of percent, you got that too. Oh, so I had made almost 30% more in five years. Wow. Right? Yeah. Okay. That will bring a lot of white people because the job paying good money now. And when them white people got there, the amount of fights and shit went up because they were consistently fucking with these brothers. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them were new, so they couldn't get good shifts. So they'd be on 3 to 11 shift. So it's a, a cluster of little white boys on 3 to 11 shift doing shit that was fucked up that we had to clean up behind all the time. Mm. So that's another part of it. Like, you like, these white boys don't understand about to have and they keep fucking with these dudes. Yeah, yeah. And then we'd have to go in and try to calm them down, try to keep them from fucking them up. Yeah, tell the story. I heard the story where you said you made up a day no crime day or something like that. <laughs> yeah. Um, some of that had to do with my dad, right? Uh, my dad loved fighting. Like saying, I'm, I'm honest to God, man. My father, 92. He stopped fighting in the street when he was 70. <laughs> right? This dude was beating niggas up half his age at 70. Goodness gracious. So one day I come by there and he like, hey, man, how many people y'all beat up? I was like, we ain't fight at all today. He was like, well, what the fuck do we pay taxes for? <laughs> like, you better whoop somebody ass tomorrow. Shit, what's this, no crime Thursday? So I'm in the jail and they about to fight. It's about to happen. And I'm looking around. And, they, and when they get ready to fight, it's a dude who did a brilliant joke. I don't know who he was, but he talked about how Mexicans had on boots. Oh, that's Ali Sadiq. That motherfucker was exactly right. Like yeah. <laughs> When you see ain't nobody got on flip flops yeah. and everybody not they, they didn't have boots, they had gym shoes. But when you see a person gym shoes tied to the point where the eyelids are hurting, <laughs> you know what I mean? Somebody about to get fucked up. Yeah. And so now they standing on both sides of me and they about to go in. And I'm like, oh shit. And I don't want them to fight, but they gonna fight if I don't do something. So I look around, I was like, okay, fellas, today is no crime Thursday. If you have to fight, do it on the next shift. And them niggas was mad as hell, but they looked at each other. They thought, man, we could fuck up some white boys. Kicking your ass next shift. <laughs> 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 and 
<laughs> and dig this. This is a part of my own dereliction, but I will admit it to you because I feel your vibe. <sighs> I didn't tell them motherfuckers they was going to fight. Really? I didn't say a goddamn word because I was like, let me tell you why. Brothers got to do all type of insane shit to just survive in jail, right? And one of the things you do, sometimes you use your toilet for something other than using the bathroom. You put your food in it to keep it cool. You could do your laundry in it. You know, it's all type of shit that they are doing to just maintain. Well, these motherfuckers would go in, see your white T-shirts in the toilet and pour your Kool-Aid in the toilet to make your shirt stain pink. Mm. This is the type of shit these crackers doing, right? Mm-hmm. And so for me, I'm like, well, if if you're gonna get locked down anyway, you might as well get your row out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If you go, out, so I ain't saying shit. Let's see what happened. Now I don't remember what happened after that, because I was like, it was my off days the next two days. So whatever <laughs> happened, I don't know. But I know I ain't say shit. I'm like, you know what? <laughs> I deal with it when I get back on my shit. <laughs> you know <what> I'm <laughs> I know all the people that's gonna be on this three to eleven gonna be white boys and they gonna dupe, dupe them motherfuckers up. <laughs> I know what's gonna happen. So I I got about that bitch. It was like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> 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 that's the situation that you created.